How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the fifth episode of Table Zero. I'm joined by my wonderful, talented, and successful co-host, a staple to the Yu-Gi-Oh scene. We got thank Garrett. you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got we got another one. If you're not watching this, this was a surprise for you. Um, we got Garrett Fai Sheer in the house. How's it going, friend? Yeah, it's been going good. I've been uh, reading terrible takes on Twitter and trying to contain my anger, but now I'm going to vent all my frustration in these next 45 minutes. There we go. And then we have the voice, the, the, the really important voice in the room. We have the one and only, the legend, Nesh. How's it going, friend? What's up? How you yes. doing, my brothers? Such hype. How's it going? How's it going for you these days? Okay, so after the ban list... Uh, there were like a lot to study. I mean, it's not a lot because I was already a Fire King. I was chilling right there, you know, like <laughs> in my Fire King strategy. I was not even playing it. So I was like, <laughs> you know, like I was feeling great. I was like, do little camera. That shit is going to carry me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even use Link Uribo during my combos. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best day of my life when the ban list dropped. And to be honest, I was actually expecting uh, like kind of what happened. Yeah. We're going to go over it, by the way. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, Nash, tell us a little bit about what's going on with you and the channel these days. Organizing anything special that people should be aware of? Yeah, it's okay. So, basically, <laughs> one second. He's gone. No, no, I oh. because there were a motorcycle and I could... Yeah. He's okay. back. So, so basically, uh, during this week, I'm going to host a Master Duel event. Yeah, I know it's crazy, like Nash playing Master Duel, but you know what's happening in Europe. Like the budget is like was very low for European events and like so we have no European devices. So I had to rely on Master Duel to uh, feed my um, feed my Yu-Gi-Oh alcoholism, if that makes sense. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Yu-Gi-Ohist, you know, you feel me? We need so competition, I, Konami. We need competition. Yeah, so oh, actually, actually, I would, I would actually like try to suggest something for Master Duel that might be super interesting, uh, maybe later on during the podcast. Yeah. But I'm hosting a big, big tournament. It's not gonna be very big because it's only ten people, and it's the top ten of the previous Duelist Cup. That's uh, huge. Why, why is it gonna happen? Because I saw a post of Tasuku uh, saying to Ryan Yu that won the Duelist Cup twice. I'm gonna get my revenge at Worlds. I was like, no, my bro, you're going <laughs> to get your revenge right now. <laughs> so I'm going to host So I'm gonna host the tournament. I'm going to pay the winner. And I want to see blood. <laughs> That's insane. That's insane. The best players on the globe fighting it out in Nash's tournament. We're going to have all the details for you in the description below. And of course, don't forget to follow Nash after you're done with this video. But we are here to discuss... Something uh, important that happened this week. Kind of surprisingly, to be honest, I was kind of like, I was giving up the, you know, 7 p.m. waiting for the ban list, refreshing the, the Twitter. Because I was like, nah, you know, there's, there's a YCS in Mexico. Then a week later, there's YCS in Raleigh. Then there's a set coming out. They're probably going to wait. But they didn't. They just dropped it mid-tournament on a Saturday. New ban list. Extremely impactful. What do you guys think about this? Uh... This ban list is like, it's like the coolest ban list, like in terms of like ban list philosophy that we've seen from Konami in like a long time. But it's also like the fakest unhits that I've ever seen. Like everyone's like overreacting for nothing. Um, I'll, I'll say I'll say the long discussion for a bit. But what about you, Nash? Um, to be honest, after seeing so many ban lists from Konami, I was expecting worse. Funnily <laughs> enough, like I was like. Wait a second. Like, that doesn't trigger me enough. <laughs> I was like, I'm not screaming. I'm not crying. I'm not jumping over the oof. Like, last time I literally ripped my shirt during the, like... <laughs> I was like... I was like, it's not like actually last time. The 25 cards were good, like... But the yeah. last, last time I actually ripped off my shirt. I was like, holy. Like, I was so angry. There was kind like, of was... nothing to be mad about, to be honest. Yeah, no. I, I, like, they are following a pattern. So I, I agree to... Um, I, I agree until a certain like point with that ban list, but there is something that should have been done in order to eat Snake Eye, in order to eat Fire King at the same way. You feel me? Uh, we're gonna go over it. Why, why do you think there's a pattern? And what is the pattern that you think exists? I mean, the pattern is they are trying to um, 
so basically they are getting emailed by Joshua about what like what's need to be banned. <laughs> So that's the pattern. Like Joshua <laughs> saying, no more flute gates, no more flute gates. No more Matmec, no more Matmec, my brother. That day that he's going to say branded fusion, I, I think I'm going to travel to German. Yeah. I think I'm going to take it. <laughs> he's not day. coming for us. He's not coming for us. I think that it's very interesting to see that. I think one thing that wasn't really surprising was hitting everything around the target. You know, they're kind of used to doing yeah. that. You need to sell cards. And I went over the ban list and I was like, okay. There's not a single card here, card here that says Sinful Spoil. No single card here that says um, Snake Eye. I'm not sure if there's even a Fire Attribute monster on the, on the list in general. But it seems like the philosophy is first wave of bad. Obviously, the next wave, we're probably going to get some sort of like more significant hit to the actual engine. Like we saw in the OCG, they skipped one. Then they eventually limited Wanted, did yada, yada, yada. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and and for this one, it was mainly taking out the, the toolbox, I feel like. There was obviously two parts of it. One is taking care of floodgates, which is a pattern that, I mean, I don't think anybody's complaining about that. Like, seeing someone limit go to mm -hmm. zero, it's kind of that amazing. Like, no but, one, I don't think anyone, all the voiceless voice players crying right now that they couldn't get their summon limit down. But oh. other than that, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's great. And anti-spell, I didn't think... Honestly, I didn't think we we're going to see that that early. Because the last ban list had like Tikabu, Gozen, Rivalry. It's like one ban list after that, we're taking care of these two. And now Skill Drain is sitting, shaking, peeing his pants. No, nah, Skill Drain's cool. Skill Drain's cool floodgate. Keep is it, keep is it cool? I, I'm, not against if, the if I'm not against Skill Drain, to be honest. Like, I think uh, it's like the easiest floodgate to play around. Yeah. To be honest with you. So, so like, it's like... Whatever. Yeah, it's kind of whatever. And if your deck loses to it, you're playing a bad deck. So, I don't know. It sucks, wow. it sucks to suck, I guess. Yeah. So that's, get wrecked. That's uh, true. It's going to be hard to play under Skildrin without Link Karibu, but we're going to we're gonna discuss that probably. Um, yeah, so how is this going to actually change the format? We're going into a new format that is already effective from yesterday in NA, right? And Europe is going to have still one more tournament without the ban list this weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, what are, what are we feeling? First thoughts about the hmm. format. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take this, I'll take this away. First of all, I feel like we're moving to like toss format again, where we're just playing like, like Konami is trying to incentivize us all to just play engine, like play engine decks instead of like having a, like being able to, which is why Brandon, I think is, is going to be busted. Uh, I mean, I think it's already like probably obviously tier one, I think right now. Um, but just as as an end like there's not a lot of cards that can actually stop engine right now it's just engine versus engine at this point when you're taking away all the inherent negates you can't just like hard trade with a single card uh anymore the only only thing we like have is like skull guardian is like the only like negate card that reads negate like in the format right now um other than that there's appaloosa but that's a monster negate like any the, the only thing that can stop brandon fusion is an ash blossom and a skull guardian so <laughs> um without fleur without savage um, Brandon actually is a, another threat. I think I've been talking about it for like the last four episodes on this on this podcast. Nash, what's going so through? So Brandon has some flaws, uh, like in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I tested a lot, Brandon. Uh, of course, as, as you might know. And the issue about Brandon is it, it has some hard time to OTK through a lot of bodies. And the follow up, uh, it's even though it's very good for Brandon, the follow up. Snake Eye just beats that. Like the follow up of Snake Eye is just way better than the follow up of Branded. Because Branded, through an entire recycle, you can last for six turns. Like if you play one Lubellion and you have to burn your Lubellion, uh, while the Snake Eye follow up, it, like it's like can go forever. Like it, it can actually go forever. Cause of Wanted that puts back the original, the original can shuffle back the, uh, the, 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 the Snake Eye Flamberge. So that's why you will see a lot of people in Branded play El Papito Loquetito. <laughs> so let's talk for a second about el pa il pa the, the Puppet Lock, okay? El Papito Loquetito. El Papito Loquetito is not only for going first in order to lock your opponent, but it's also to deal with the generate follow-up. Because once you break a board in Branded, 
you need also to check your opponent follow-up because you breaking a board doesn't shoot that you're gonna win. You breaking a board and ending on one interruption doesn't ensure you're gonna win because that's not even winning most of the time. So you need to ensure to stop your opponent from playing. And that's actually why Puppet Lock is even better going second against certain decks. That's an interesting angle. Are we are we genuinely surprised that we're going to talk about like specific hits in a second? But mm -hmm. are we surprised that no branded cards made the list? To be honest, I'll be real with you. I was expecting Sanctify. Uh, yeah. I am a huge fan of branded. Like I wouldn't die on this hill, my brother, if you touch branded fusion. Like the, yeah. like Konami would like like I would be like I would be a public enemy. <laughs> I would be outside of the Konami headquarter, my brother. Like, we are not joking. But that's I would not take a pitch I'm and not... forks. <laughs> no, I think I think that like obviously Brand Fusion is a card that a lot annoys a lot of people because how easy it is to like generate advantage from, obviously. Okay, but, but here is the thing, because you are right, it generates a lot of uh, advantage, but how do you use that card? You have ten different options, yeah. and there is one line that wins and nine that lose. <laughs> are you good enough to play those decks? Right. That is the thing. Yeah. How, how many people did you see winning a YSS with the brand? Um, how many people did you see? Brother. Brother. I got purple on my face last time I saw someone on stream playing brand. Yeah. No, but that's always the case. Like, you shouldn't... I, I don't watch games with branded anymore on feature. I can't handle the the embarrassment. Um, but oh, uh, but yeah. I, think, I think it's also like... I think that the deck is a deck that exists in the format ever since it came out, honestly. Like, maybe besides, like, tier format where like shufflers made it kind of impossible to play and it was like a strong tier zero format. Now it was a tier zero format where branded still did things because of puppet, but because the engine is just at full power. Um, the question is, are people not playing it because it's bad or because there's other options? I, I it, it really is the, the good player problem. Like me, watch, myself, like watching some of the best players in the game, uh, play the play the deck compared yeah. to you know having facing off against someone uh, on my locals who just you know just pop a locks me turn zero tries to do it every time but they like they're playing in a way that hard loses a droplet and you know it's it's about you know the difference between a good branded player and an average one is so wide that you're not going to see premier event success from the deck because of uh, the amount of good players that are going to pick up the deck um I, and nesha about that about you know why cards like branded fusion should stay in this game uh because it, it's actually a skillful card um believe it or not because of the amount of options that you get um which is which is also like I, I hear people complaining about a card like sp little knight i actually think that card is really healthy for the game because it encourages so many different decisions you know you have to when you use sp little knight going second you have to concede your battle phase you can now, you know, remove cards from your field, bring them out to the end phase. There are so many decisions. And that's why I like Yu-Gi-Oh! is because of uh, how many options you have at any given moment. Uh, and I don't think Konami... Konami limiting cards that prevent that kind of thing, like Baron, like Savage, like Summon Limit, like Anti-Spell, that is good for the game. We want more options in a game state. Yeah. Like, do you know what, what I think about people complaining about SP Little Knight? Did you ever watch the very first episode of Dragon Ball? When Goku <laughs> falls off, off the mountain, right? And he forgets to be a Saiyan, and then he decides to save the world, right? But he recovered from that jump. People that, like, actually think that SP is a problem, they never recovered from that jump. Like, they, like, they got just the bad. <laughs> so I think that's an, a very interesting point. Not the Dragon Ball one that was funny, but it wasn't. Yeah, okay. Um, we're gonna... I, I think that the skill gap thing is something that exists in a lot of other games. I think that if you look at like FPS video games that are competitive online, there's a concept of like, for example, in a league, you would ban weapons that are just too strong because it lowers the skill gap between players. The fact that you can go and activate a floodgate or summon a baron, which is really easy, is something that kind of lowers the skill gap within the game, I believe. I agree. Yeah, it lowers the skill gap between people and now, without those tools, it's going to be harder to establish a board. And obviously, your decision-making and your skill is going to come a little bit more into play, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Like, of course, there's still free win cards. Shifter still exists, um, which sometimes could be a free win. 
but I think I think it was a skill gap philosophy. This one, at least, I think Baron. I've been calling it for like a year. I'm saying Baron should go. I had Apo access code <laughs> on that list as well, but maybe we'll get to them someday. Maybe access code is past its prime. But what do you think about that? I mean, I mean yeah, go for you it. Go, go for it. Go, no, you go for it. Go for it. Go for it. I mean, there are different tools to decay at the end of the day. Before there were Boral Sword, then we got access code, right? And there are, now there is also the Zelantis OTK. Like the tools to OTK, there, there are wide options for every deck. So I'm not totally against the tools to OTK also because access, access code has one of a, a very few interesting, like um, a very interesting technical play that it can banish itself to dodge skill drain, for example. That's, that's another thing. Like, there are technical plays that you can do with access code. You also need to burn sometimes your entire extra deck in order to pop enough cards of your opponent. Uh, in main phase 2, it's, it's a necessary, in my opinion, against some decks that actually flood a lot of engine on the board. So I'm not totally against access code. As Borrel Sword was a problem back in the day when you were switching a monster in defense and attacking twice. Like, yeah. we always said those amazing OTK options from Link strategy. What I am totally against in my own like that's my own opinion then someone might disagree are negates i i am not a huge fan of negates uh, even though like i you have to play against those blah 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 but apple laws in my opinion is what makes the game uh less skilled that it should be but even though people think that the snake eye format is not as skilled right then they have to tell me how christian urena won two wises in a row with the same fucking deck. How? If this is not yeah. a skilled format, how a person can top one event and won the other two? Yeah. How Pac got first in a YCS, second the, the next one? Those are the same people. The same people that every year consistently top and study the format. It's not about a, like it's not about a deck being degenerate. It's about you. Yeah. You, watcher, you, that you are yeah. watching this, this video. Did you study enough? And, and the craziest thing is Christian Arena showing all his combos after every YCS. <laughs> like, he's he's telling everyone, it's like, hey, guys, you can beat me. And then he shows up and cooks everyone. He doesn't misplay the whole tournament. Like, what are you supposed to say? Like, typical. You, and the thing is, pe these people don't know that they're misplaying. They don't. They think they get unlucky every time. They don't realize that how these small little interactions over the course of a single game are going to affect you for a whole tournament. They're going to win you that one game that gets you that one match that gets you in the top cut, and then you play perfectly throughout. Like, that's the, the greatest thing here about, I mean, Christian Urena probably played around every single hand trap perfectly. Like, it's, yeah. it's not that you can't get lucky for 25 rounds in a row. That doesn't happen. That doesn't yeah. happen. I think when you, when you look back at... It, it, because... it might be... Yeah, go ahead. Because even though you know how to play your combo going first, right? But like even go, you go out of pilot, out of, out of pilot when you go first. Yeah. How do you play close positions? How do you play stall position? How do you play the slower game? How do you enter up your opponent properly? Those are things you are not going to find in your YouTube video. Because those are theory that are very hard to approach, very hard to explain. It's the fundamental of the game itself. It's the very basic. You cannot build a house without the fundamental behind it. Because right now, Christian Uranian in his video is giving you like the out. The spreadsheet. Where are the fundamental? Where are the fundamental, my brother? Yeah. In yeah. order to have technical plays, that's a thing that I always repeated to everyone who approaches me and asks me, how, how do you technically play like against certain things? You need to know the format. You need to know what your opponent deck does. You need to know how to interact with the end trap, your opponent combo because you learned that mm -hmm. deck. You need to play your opponent deck. And then you need to know perfectly your deck. Those are the, f the five things that you need to know in order to accomplish the perfect technical play. Yeah. And we're seeing the pretty much the same players past, I think, two formats, topping consistently. This is what skill looks like. And if you look back at a time where Mystic Mind, for example, was a card, I remember like top cuts and feature matches and stuff like that. You'd see all types of players that were managing to get in and some that weren't managing to get in because of that lowered skill gap when you have such powerful auto win cards um yeah. but i think i think now it's proven itself that like you know great pilots like pack like christian um they're proving themselves but
We're going to move on to the next topic. We talked about band cards, but mm -hmm. we, got, we got two big boys coming back from the dead. Um, we got Arch Nemesis Protoss mm -hmm. and Thunder Dragon Colossus. <clears throat> two cards that have been talked about for a while. Maybe Colossus a little bit more because it's been on the ban list a little bit longer. But they're back and people are worried. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I have finished my sentence, Colossus? please. Colossus is the fakest card. Uh, I have so many <laughs> topics about this. The people who are overreacting to like, oh my god, guys, I'm every deck can go. I'm gonna go Infernal Flame Banshee for Nemesis Flag, and I'm gonna search either okay, searching Protoss, that's more real. Searching Nemesis Corridor for Colossus is probably the worst play I have seen. Colossus in 2024 has yet to meet Kashira Fenrir. It has yet to meet Forbidden <laughs> Droplet. It is yet to meet Dark Ruler no more. Okay, I knew Dark Ruler no more back then. But the thing is, is that Colossus as a card right now, I don't think is is even a... Th it's good as part of a board. I've seen like a Hermit Hansen Chaos pile in the last couple days. Um, but as a card right now, as like a, a generic, Colossus is not real. Um, Protoss is funny. Um... I saw a Kashdira player play it because you can just banish all your guys, no problem. Yeah. Uh, but like playing the bricks in your main deck to try and play a floodgate that only works kind of post side against fire decks. Um, I think these two cards are fake, but in the future they'll probably be pretty annoying. Yeah, I do share almost the same feeling on uh, what we said. My main concern about Colossus is not about the how dangerous it is right now, it's the potential for danger that bothers me. Um, it's because it's because then you have to pay attention, like because then you will have to play against the generate the generate combo decks. The issue about Colossus being in is the fact that right now, in my opinion, you cannot really play like board like a total board breaker approach because it's it's hard to predict if your opponent is gonna go for protoss or colossus if someone like just wants to have fun and like, decides to play an hard combo deck against you then you just lose if you go for a board breaker approach because of the lingering effect of protoss yeah and that's not a thing uh, like i want to deal with it's not right. a, like i think lingering effects that last for the entire thing it's not even colossus it's like it's it's even more about protoss as you just said the lingering mm -hmm. effect that lasts for <laughs> two entire turn it's something that should not exist in Yu-Gi-Oh like we had the proof of it with the um with the virtual world strategy right when yeah. uh when the calamities like when the um VFD the VFD Very fun dragon when the VFD was when, when the VFD was a thing right like yeah. we got that we got that uh, the taste in our mouth and we already got the taste in our mouth of Protoss already I mean, Colossus was kind of more in a different era, I feel, than Protoss. Protoss was obviously a little bit more recent. It wasn't obviously modern as we know today. But I think that there's I think there's two things here. One, seeing the ban list and then like seeing seeing the ban cards and and saying like, wow, this is this is pretty exciting. I mean, this is a different philosophy and it hits really well and it allows people to play, but then going over to the limited section and seeing those two cards back, first of all, it kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth because what is the reasoning? People are saying that um, that Sword Soul has lost Baron, so they need Protoss back, which I think is complete that makes garbage. Sense. I think yeah. Baron was way better than Protoss for Sword Soul. I'll yeah, obviously. Honest. Obviously, but yeah. why... No. What could be the reason? What could be the reason? I think this is the question I want to ask because I think people need to think about that. What is the reason to bring those two cards back? I think for Colossus itself, I think there might be a Thunder archetype that might pop up soon, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that there were there were other like other, like like there were other years in which Colossus could have come back and do nothing, right? Why now? Yeah. Colossus now? hasn't met Sprite Sprint yet. <laughs> Why not? Like, like I, I don't get it. Like, why doing it now? Why Colossus now? The yeah. people, like, there were some people asking for it, but like that was always the case. But yeah. why now? You feel me? Yeah. Could be. I think. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I actually, I'm struggling to answer that question 
as well. Uh, besides making the actual like Thunder Dragon deck playable, um, because like now the Thunder Dragon cards are actually like they're still pretty good for, even for modern Yu-Gi-Oh standards. Uh, again, Herman Hansen Chaos Pile. If you've seen a, a, a DB Grinder video um, or two, I mean that kind Herman of. <laughs> I know. He likes He's to play a... shitty decks. He played the Demand <laughs> in fucking Tier Element format. He played he Volcanics. Played... Volcanics. That was, that was based. Uh, in Bologna. That, was based. that guy is a crackhead. Like, don't never trust Herman Anson, my God. Like, never trust him. Like, he's an insane player. He can play every deck. He has a, a Rubik Cube instead of the brain, but don't trust him. <laughs> don't trust him. Herman, Herman, you're a, you're a friend of the show. Um, I think that for me, it's kind, it kind of boils down to a few things. I think Colossus and Protoss are very different in what they represent. I think that when I just started doing YouTube, I was interviewing Tatsim for an episode of a show. And we talked about Colossus and it was banned back then. And Tatsim said, and it was I think two and a half years ago probably, he said, imagine your opponent's board, whichever deck they're playing, and imagine that board having a Colossus in addition to what they have on the board. Do you care? And it was two and a half years ago. And I said, probably not. I probably don't care. And I think what what we're going to see a lot of right now is a combo deck or some sort of like heavy pile that can just stick another Colossus on the board. And I think um, Josh talked about this a little bit. It's at Colossus is a three in Master Duel, which is not a perfect indication, but it still is somewhat checked and maybe people just want to play it does their nothing. deck. It might do nothing. I think Protoss is the one that I'm struggling to understand. I think Colossus, give the people what they want. Let them put bricks in their deck. I think it's absolutely fine. I, I think why I, they unbanned Protoss is because you can summon it against Tempai Dragon completely. You can FTK them now. So now Tempai has to go first. <laughs> okay, so for, uh, uh, okay, for Colossus, I can see your guy's point. Like I can see that Colossus is not very playable in meta decks, right? But for Protoss, what does stop me put it in my 15 card, uh, in my 15 end trap, end trap deck? What does stop me to put one Protoss in it? If I draw it going second, fine. How do you pop it? You cannot pop it. People have already been board. doing that with Eskatos recently. Because it was just like okay. a, another option. Okay. Like, and they're just going to do it now with Protoss. Board, right? I bet your interruptions. My last card is like my last card is uh, the uh, the Protoss special summon oh, Protoss yeah. called Fire against Fire King against Neka. Then you don't play GG. the next turn. Then you don't play the next turn. Yeah. I am scared of this one off. I am honestly scared because you can put it in any deck with a lot of entraps. You can play it in Snake Eye. You can play it in Fire King, and it's gonna always be good. And I think that the last point I want to make a about board this board breaker. It's a board breaker. Yeah. That card is a like board pop, break. It's like it's pop it for every deck. One. Pop it for every it's deck. Like pop it for every deck, right? If you want to think of it like that. I mean, obviously yeah, you have it to could stack be. it, but like it could be. It's just another. It's just another floodgate that works going first and second. I think it's that, gonna. That the, this is gonna be one of the cards that. First of all, I'm hoping that they're gonna unturn their decision on this uh, when they see yeah. that it might cause a problem. Uh, hopefully, because I I really don't understand Colossus. I totally get this feels to me like the next format and we're going to probably see that in rally and we're going to talk about that in a second people are going to have to deck build a little bit differently because of that you're not going to be able to go in a full approach of full hand traps full board breakers even a mix of the two like you said nash you're not going to be able to go in a route where you kind of like build your deck in a way that can even stop that it's just going to be another one card in your deck that can just go extremely extremely positive for you um, and I do want to talk about one other thing regarding the, the banned cards before we move on to a little bit looking into the future. You talked about it when you just came in, Nash, about Fire King and Doolittle Chimera. Was mm -hmm. Link Karibo enough for adjusting the current meta? My brother, Link Karibo only eats... Uh, like Linkuribo was only good in Entrap Wars, okay? And sometimes to save the Apollos. I don't even need that. Like I end on Zelantis under Apollos. My combo, like my normal Snake Ayash, my, my, my Snake Ayash plus any extend. 
and Zona Pollos on top, Zelanti Sandere. You still cannot enter in battle. Yeah. Like, so the, the so the, the the theory about yes, but now you cannot protect anymore your Apollosa in battle phase. That is not that is not a real that is not that is not real. Like mm -hmm. uh, like all the combos, like ninety percent of the combos that I do with Fire King, they end on Zelantis under Apollosa, and you still cannot enter in battle phase. So, so that <laughs> argument like is to scrap down. The other one that might make a little bit of sense is the fact that post the turn one, if you are in an end trap war. Linkuribo is gonna like he's gonna totally make like null nullify the, the, the Veiler and impermanence that your opponent might have in order to play a grind like made of entrance. So that is that is probably the, the 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 thing that we might have to talk about. And the other thing is that Linkuribo had a very nice combo with Promethean because you go to Promethean Chelling 1, Linkuribo Chelling 2. Promethean doesn't have to pop the fire on your board, but you can still pop the card on your opponent's board and you oh. were gaining a plus one in the process. One more thing on that is there's no heat soul combos anymore. Um, that is one thing that was, I mean, you don't go for, I don't think you want, you don't go for heat soul I don't stuff. like it. I never liked it. Yeah. No, there is a reason behind that because, because that instead of to going for it all, if you go for too little, you gain a body on the board. If you go for it all, you just gain one card in hand. There might be some scenarios in which throwing one card might be better than having a body on the board because you open at the extend, but overall, in my opinion, like it never mattered. I, th I think that one more point that we haven't discussed, and it's very small, but I think we all said a lot of things that might add up in Konami's brain to like, okay, then this is a problem. Um, I think that the fact that it's a dark and a link allowing you to unlock dark into Promethean Princess and then start recurring from, from your graveyard, I think it's also pretty good for follow-up. It's a very small point, but it is something that definitely happens. You can sack off a yeah. monster, turn it into a dark, <laughs> make a dark, summon back Promethean, blah, blah, blah. You can actually start your combo from there. Um, but I also ask myself, so like Link or Ebo, is not a card that would have been banned in any other reality besides like the tier zero level one focused deck that we're um, in right now. And even I think Baron had its place, but maybe Savage, even, even Savage was a little bit of a stretch for me. What, what do we think happens after? So next ban list, Wanted goes to one, Ash goes to one, whatever. Snake Eyes actually start getting hit. Do those cards need to stay on the ban list? Isn't that super weird? I'll be real with you. Pure Snake Eye did not get hit at all. No, not at all. Not at all. You can still play... Yeah. I was playing Pure without Synchros in my last original. Just not playing without the Synchros. Without Synchros? Without Synchros. <laughs> without Synchros, you think? No, no. I yeah. that That's what I played. I, that's what I played. It, it wasn't obviously as good as the Synchros. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying you think that now Snake Eye is going to be played without Synchros. Oh no no I know I know it's I know about she Omega know, I know she about hey, know. whoa 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 I know about Omega I know about Omega I know about the spatter I know things um, maybe Omega gets bad Klaus next Wall, right the Chinese the Taiwanese and, and Japanese people <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I'm, go, I'm peeping the goo online guys like if you look on YouTube like I I do get like I like YouTube as well but the goo is on Twitter my brother. The go is on Twitter. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Like I have to say the truth. Like I, I, I love like I love everyone, right? I, I look all of your guys' content. I look over your guys' combo. But when you type the Japanese name of the deck list on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the real secrets. Those are the real why are they playing it like that though? They have all the synchros legal. They just want a hand loop? No, all I'm saying is like they try different stuff. Yeah. Like they do try different options. Yeah. Like in a more board breaker format, playing the loop makes more sense, right? That that sounds like if your opponent reasonable. is on dark ruler or that, that that specific local is on dark ruler. Yeah. End loop. Yeah. If your opponent has like if there are a lot of branded end loop. Yeah. Hit a tragedy. Um <laughs> Yeah, hit a tragedy. <laughs> Hit a Mercurier. Um, I did want to say one more thing. Yeah, I also like going to metaduelist.com and looking at the OCG lists. I do really much uh, appreciate that. We're going to move on to the next topic here. We got a new set coming up. We just started getting reveals. Finally, Konami's been asleep for a little bit because they're probably going to... Uh, they, they were pl probably uh, planning a banlist party. Legacy of Destruction is out in... 
around 10 days, even 10 days exactly from now, we have a lot of new archetypes joining the scene. Um, based from what we're, we're, we know now, not based on any leaks at all, there's a, there's a rarity situation in this set, which is extremely interesting, that we saw a little bit of. But we're not going to be, be discussing rarity specifically. Yeah. We're going to be discussing the archetypes in this set. And there's new Ashen support. There's Tenpai Dragon. There's new Centurion cards. Memento. You Bell stuff. There's a lot of big things. I think the biggest question on everyone's mind is Nash. Give us one word about Tenpai Dragon. Okay, I know that was going <laughs> to... Hey... I know that what that was gonna come to be honest, bro. I have to be I, I have to be true with you. I got a bone when I saw that shit come on. <laughs> <laughs> because because I'm a cheap motherfucker. Like if I can find something on pretty affordable, cents, uh, pretty pro pretty affordable, my brother. Like I don't have to I sell my lunch. Wait 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 wait. Nash, show us on camera. Oh, show show yeah, us so show us the trident. I'm not okay. scooping. I, I'm I not scooping. We're gonna talk about the I'm trident. I'm not scooping well, until I see the trident. Pumped <laughs> the price of the trident in order to make it be hundred bucks. You are all piece of shit, and I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do everything in my power. I'm gonna build the deck without trident. I'm gonna make a combo without trident in order to make you motherfucker. This morning, you are gonna be down on the street on your knees because you made the shit hundred bucks. Yeah, and it's gonna be reprinted soon anyway. I believe. Yeah. I believe. I believe. Yes. So why do yeah, we just cook without that? You don't even need it. You don't even need it yeah, for like ninety percent of need your that games too. anyway. You don't need it. Um, you actually don't need it most of the time. You but Nesh, like, Nesh, actually. besides the rarities, which are obviously a bonus for everyone, um, I think people and the reason why Trident Drag Dragion is cruising around a hundred dollars right now is because people <laughs> believe that this deck is going to be impactful in the TCG. Uh, it is going to be. Not impactful when it comes up. Yeah. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be an okay deck when it comes up. Not super like it's gonna be maybe like a 1.5 tier two, probably tier two when it comes up. Yeah, I agree. but then in like then in June, that's when it gets dangerous. That's when it gets good. Infinite Forbidden, Ten Pi Dragon Poplar. Yes. And then we got also the uh, Pokey Pokey Dragon, the new Pokey Dragon. Mm -hmm. The Snake Ayash, bro. The Snake Ayash, <laughs> correct. We got the Snake Ayash <laughs> and the Popular for Tempa. And that that one is dangerous. That one is dangerous. That that yeah. that that's that's not potential for danger. That's like that's Kryptonite. That, you, that's format Kryptonite right there. What do you guys think? Fi, let me turn this to you. What is that's missing? Batman with the contingency plan right there. Like Jesus. we actually need the contingency plan after that. Jesus yeah, Christ. Um, Fi. A little bit about Tenpai. Right. I think people are very, very interested in Tenpai right now because there's hype. That's why people are like buying cards like crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But what do you think is missing from Tenpai or what's happening in the format that is going to be different from the success the deck had in the OCG? At least well, right now. One, I mean, so let's get the obvious out of the way. Like Tenpai Dragon kind of invalidates Maxi because it just plays during the battle phase and you don't really have, you know, yeah, and the whole point of the deck is to OTK your opponents. All the card advantage you get off of Maxi is kind of invalidated right there. Um, but, but the problem here, at least in the, the TCG, I feel like you have to sack people more so. Um, like, you have to just, like, like draw the right <laughs> non-engine combos to be able to win in, this, uh, in, yeah. this, in the TCG right now. It At least, like, yes, you can play well, but if you're... Okay, so I think at the very start of this format, Tempi Dragon will do very well because people don't know how to interact with it yet. And people but are going to be playing it like holding, crazy. Holding their Ash Blossom, then this this whole, like, you can break the board, but if you get Ash on your quick play during the battle phase, um, it hurts a lot. Like, th this deck, I don't think is resilient enough. That's why the Infinite Forbidden support is busted, because it actually gives them, like, a good starter and, like, more play extension. Right now, it's very it's a very glass cannon deck, even though its whole goal is to go second in OTK. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um... Another deck that I want to talk about that uh, I've been seeing a lot of combos for, um, they're, they're getting a new secret rare and an ultra rare in the set, and that is Centurion. We obviously saw in the OCG King Calamity getting banned during the next the last no, ban list. Why didn't we see that card? Okay, why didn't we see that card on the ban list here? 
I'm so sad. I'm well, sick. Well, you might. I hope you. Okay, so I'm going to tell you this. I hope you don't see it in, on the next ban list, which means that people didn't really play Centurion. But I think Centurion is very solid with the new support. There's a lot of new lines and a lot of interesting lines through Nibiru, for example, that you could play. And the deck, at the end of the day, is an FTK deck. I think it really depends on what people play in their decks, because if people start playing things like Droplet, <clears throat> or just the Imperm even to... Or, I don't know, like those kind of cards to stop things like Protoss, that could actually spill over um, to hitting Centurion as well. Okay. So, I'm, I'm going to take this away from you, Nesh, because I've had a, a lot of horrible experiences testing against Centurion right now. Fun deck. And so the problem with this deck, you're like, oh, yes, I just play Droplet and Cosmic, and I literally win. It's so easy. Well, now they have enough space to search a counter trap. Um... Right now, as part of their main combo, they do their full combo and search a counter trap and now have extra play extenders. So your droplet, unless you're sending a trap card, is is going to just get, get hit with a counter trap and you lose. Um, so you need multiple pieces of good non-engine as well. There's a lot of, like, Ash against the deck is, like, pretty mid um, overall to stop the combo. But you need multiple ways to stop them from getting to the counter trap and then stop the FTK. Um, and if you don't see that, you lose. Yeah. There you go. I, well, I kind of I kind of well just summed it up. Well that's said. why that's the state of that is the state of Centurion right now. You are now like double twice as likely to get FTK'd now. Congratulations. No, you used to need only one <laughs> to stop the FTK. Yeah. Now you need two. And oh. if they have the extender, now you need three. So best of luck. Again, like we go back to the same point. Lingering effects should not be in Yu Gi Oh. Thank you, Nash. Um, Thank you. That is, that is not a thing. <laughs> Are we going to see Pearly come back to Raleigh? I'll be real with you. If he's Ding Kang Fam, if Ding Kang Fam's at Raleigh, no, besides, yeah, yeah, besides Ding Kang Fam. <laughs> I'll be I'll be real with you, like purely my actually well like could do good now because people wouldn't give a fuck about siding against purely like because like i, I think that's the reason you can steal games profile, you can just steal games yeah i don't know but like what i'm saying is if you look at the previous deck profile of all the people that won did you see a kurikara in the side deck i didn't see that did you see a goblin rider in the side deck i didn't see that did you see an exceeding core in the side deck i didn't see that either you see any Kaiju in the side deck. Obviously, that makes no sense, but I didn't see that. Like, was there any counterplay to the Noir in the side deck or the deck? Well, the, I think the, that derived... Wise. But it's derived from the fact that people know that that it's much less playable with one semi-limited memory and one limited memory, and it's badly hit. Now, with the ratios going up a little bit, there's no reason... I mean, it depends. If you're going blind into a format like Rally, maybe there's a reason. But again, Snake Eyes can just search Kurikara. It doesn't hurt that much to play the one Kurikara in the side, just That's in case. It's, it's good against other decks. Zero Why not? Effort, yeah. Zero effort. Literally zero effort. And max. Uh, and, and you and got maybe to max out again. Reverse like engineering out. that, maybe because of that, people are just not going to play poorly. Moving on to the next point. Um. I'm gonna give uh, that, you. That was probably the issue, right? Like that, that's. We went full circle. We went full circle. It's fine. Before we go on to the last topic, I want to give you guys some deck names, and each one of you rank it on a tier of one to three. New decks from Legacy of Destruction, Ashened. Seven. What's What's the last? Wait, one tier, to ten. Uh, you can go. You uh, can go uh, more. Like, like two, what? What? Like tier one, two. Rogue, Three, four, like five, six, seven, eight. I mean, what's what's behind tier eight? Like, okay, what's under tier eight? That, that is the answer. That, that. Like pure mecha phantom beast, probably. <laughs> uh, like, that's not passionate. That's us in it. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Make I, it work. Had the Akev, I, I had the Akev. That has to be racist. I'll be real with you. That's literally Pompeii on fire. Like we have to stop that shit against Italian. <laughs> that's anti-Italian. That's anti-Italian. That's anti-Italian, my brother. I can, I cannot back it up. I cannot like. That I go against my heritage if I do that. Wait, like but my grandpa is gonna throw me like the receipt of the like a receipt behind my back if I do it. I yeah, can't. 
Isn't isn't melodious though pro Italian? It's a little bit more pro Italian though, right? <laughs> Where's melodious standing in your eyes, guys? Could steal some okay, games. After, uh, my if editor they... actually, my editor today actually showed me for two hours melodious combos. I am not, I'm, I'm not joking. Like I literally like was begging him to stop. <laughs> And we did also all the math about the deck. The math is not that bad, actually. Like, it's actually consistent. Uh, the end board is fine. It can beat Tempai actually pretty consistently. My issue with that deck is it's a Pendulum deck. I don't think Pendulums have potential for... Like, I, they have only potential for danger when they go first. But, like, they don't have, like... like it's just a glass cannon. That came they have a branded because, fusion. Um, I get it. And it's yeah. even better than Brand Fusion if it <laughs> resolves. But also, <laughs> and then, yeah. all the bricks that you have to put in that shit. Yeah. You have to put in cards from that were trash in 2015. They were like 2011 cards in 2015. Like, I'm sure that shit, like, Melodious in 2015 would have probably lost to, like, fucking Dino Rabbit, bro. Um, <laughs> there's a, like, those cards are garbage. And you have to play them, which is the sad part. Um, which two, is why, two more like, decks. If, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just light pendulum soup. That's all it should be. That's all. Light. If there's an insane light pendulum monster that gets released, that's what you play the melodious cards in. Anyways. Light um, light pendulum soup. That sounds delicious. Um, Ragnarika. Okay, I'll be real with you. I don't know shit about Raika. Sick-ass oh. art. Sick-ass art. Looks great. Um, They add... The only thing you should know, Nash, is that they add plants. They put plants on the field. And... And they work with Ricka cards sometimes as like a starter. No, I I, I actually didn't even read them. Like I'll be real with you. <laughs> okay, so Nesh is like, you got some homework. Told me about Raika, read Raika, learn Raika. I, like I don't know everything about it, but they put plants on the field, and you can you can do plant combos with them. They uh, have so they have like, access to an old um, alien link monster that can search a trap that is basically Baguska. No, no, no. Stop, what do you mean? Stop. Stop. Yeah, that's what Stop. they do. Um, and You're lastly, <laughs> lastly, a deck that I think could have some promise. Fiend Link, you bell. What are we oh, guys thinking? Uh, Finch Meat. Finch Meat. Finch Meat. No, 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 no. Not that, not that one. I mean, at least in, in no. Legacy Ubel, of Destruction, what do you think about the Do you bell support like pile? Nightmare Throne, the field spell? Um, oh, no, no, Dark yeah, Bang yeah, yeah, the Nightmare Throne. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Dark yeah. Bang on yeah, a Nightmare Throne. Yeah. Oh, I think that card is broken. Nightmare Throne is broken. It is. It is extremely broken. Yeah, and uh, like the fusion is not released yet. It's gonna be in June too, right? Uh, yeah, you think it's probably. Be in the battles? Probably, I think so. I yeah, think the so. Card is broken. It was the a promo for the no for the book. I saw no CG, like literally just playing the three throne and uh, one off of each Uber. Yeah. And splash it in Snake Eye. In Snake Eye? Yeah, in Snake. Yeah, just to put up a negate. Yeah. Jesus. We oh, don't have we don't have negates now. That might be. I was a, actually a good doing call. combos like previous nights ago. Yeah. About that. That shit is broken. Yeah. La lastly, before we wrap up for today, uh, we got a little segment here that we like to talk about new tech cards that are available for the upcoming format. So we talked about a few already. What we have here is um, we do have in the TCG mind control at three right now. Change of yeah. heart did not go to two. Heavy Storm didn't come back as well, by the way. Um, nor did Summon Sorceress. But we'll leave that for the next episode. What are we thinking about an approach of just like, there's no hard Omni Negates anymore. Obviously, people are going to balance out hand traps with some board breakers because there's less negates. What do we think about just stealing an Apollosa for free? Um, that was, uh, this is kind of like my, my idea of it. <laughs> Uh, like at least you can you can put these cards into your side deck uh, because pretty confidently every Snake Eye board is ending on on Appaloosa at least for the people who don't know the sauce at least going into Raleigh you have to find the sauce in the next four days or else you're getting your Appaloosa taken by a mind control so uh, if you're not going for the synchro boards uh, here so you're ending on Appaloosa uh, change of heart just works extremely extremely well uh, was already that. working extremely well, right? Like generally speaking, if they were just going for the one card dash combo, yeah. change yeah. of art, mind control, enemy controller, they were all working. You're, oh, you're OTKing them right there. That's that's the thing. Yeah. 
it seems like it's going to be an approach that people might take. I'm very, very interested to see. I mean, I think YCS Rally, which is... I can, uh, I can agree on the side deck. I don't think in the main deck. Because then you no. go first, you get entrapped, and then what do you do with those guys? Nothing. Yeah. So, like, I, I like Droplet right now in the main deck. I'll be real with you. I like Droplet Droplet's a lot right so now. Droplet's so good. Now's the time, is fire. Broken right now. Now's the time. You were ahead of your time. That's all. That's all. I I've had Droplet in my main deck for the last two months. <laughs> I don't know what these people have been I like <laughs> I like droplet a lot right now because like it kinda like dodges impermanence and Baylor going second and clears your opponent board as well. But it's also okay going first. Like it's not the worst card to have at the end of the day, it's good at the end yep. of the day. Yeah. I'm not you can even I, stop I, them from dodging effects as well. Sometimes. Yeah, the only card I'm not sure right now is do I like talent? Do I not like talent? It's something that I will have to decide after rally. That is the only thing. Uh then, like, for the standard Veiler, Ash, Impermanence, maybe Mourner, and we got it. But, like, I think we're still playing hand traps. Uh, we are for still this, playing for, hand traps, for but I think, yeah. I, I, like, even though I, like, I, I, I agree, playing hand traps is the move. Uh, I, don't, I don't think playing Nibiru in the main deck will make sense for Riley. With, uh, like, Nibiru in the main? With the purely being back, with Brandon yeah. being boosted. Mm -hmm. With Kashtira like topping events as well, there is also voiceless voice. You might get like even pure snake. I can play around Nib like Nibiru and Droll are weird right now. The issue is even though I like Droll because like it kind of works against Fire King. At the end of the day, the combo is the same with normal Snake Ayash. You still make a board. So Nibiru and Droll are the cards that in a vacuum, if you draw them, they might not do anything, right? But if you draw Valor, Impermanence, Ash, Mourner, you might be able actually to stop your opponent turn with just one of those. While Nibiru and, and Droll, they, they don't, don't trade. Well. They don't trade well, right? I do agree on that. They don't trade well. So, if you're playing a lot of entrops, like you actually, if you are playing like maximizing on 18 entrops, then it makes sense to play Droll and Nibiru. But like if you have only to choose in between 14, 15 entrops, then like how good is Nibiru over a Droplet, for example? Yeah. yeah yeah i think uh the thing is like you can think of like i think a lot of people are like when they saw this band they're like oh my god nibiru is now the best card ever i don't have to there's no more uh, there's no baron there's no more savage um but you actually have to like you know look at the big picture and that is the fact that almost every single deck that's relevant right now inherently just baked into the deck plays around nibiru uh, that is a and in fact that is a you know, a mandatory condition for your deck to be good, at least in this format, is that it just has to beat a certain level of hand traps. And these decks already do that. Branded doesn't really care that much about Nibiru. In fact, you might let them plus off the Nibiru. Like, there's, yeah. there's a variety. Nib like, me, please. Voiceless plays under it. Pearly plays under it. Snake Eyes plays through it. There's so many negates already. Appaloosa exists. Like, I don't think Nibiru. The only reason you'd ever play Nibiru, I put it in the side. Uh, I think about it in the side, maybe if you really are scared about getting hit with Protoss. That's it. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I think that YCS Rally, um, as you guys are listening or seeing this right now, is just a few days away. It's going to be this weekend. I think it's going to be fucking hype. I mean, that stream is going to go wild. Mm. I want. I really want to see the games already. Um, what are we, we thinking, sort of like uh, maybe a little bit of a um, prediction for event okay, representation? Okay. I have a prediction. I have a prediction. I will give away my playset of Wanted's if one copy of Nemesis Corridor tops that event. If oh. one copy of Nemesis Corridor tops that, tops that event, I'll give my play, playset of Wanted. That card is trash. You heard it here first, everybody. Also, I have a question. When is the new code talker come back? Like, Code of Soul. Oh, been it's coming level. it's coming out in the next set in legacy of destruction yeah yeah that's what i'm saying it is not legal then for the Salmon event great is gonna be but Salmon great is gonna be very good but it's not yeah. legal for the event i get it oh is no, it not, yeah, no it yeah, is Riley. i'm just oh not for ollie oh, yeah. no 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 not for ollie yeah um that yeah code of soul point though code of soul is is uh yeah you think it, it's going to be impactful for salad yeah you can play around the beer now you don't end anymore on any beer token wow but people are not going to play Nibiru anymore. That's the perfect timing. Stars align. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Awesome. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up here. I think um, Raleigh is going to be really, really exciting to watch with the new cards. But before the new set, um, any closing words, gentlemen? Anything I think else? Yu-Gi-Oh format in for Legacy of Destruction is going to be interesting. I think these, uh, I think these bands are cool. I think that I mean Snake Eyes is obviously still the best deck, but you know I think it allows for just a lot more you know diversity and non-engine and more choices that you can make. I think that people should stop complaining about cards. <laughs> <laughs> I think that people should stop complaining about like what's wrong with the meta and analyze what's wrong with them before like going over like like specific cards that don't even like are so impactful like for example tier elements full power is way better than snake eye full power i didn't see so many people crying during tier elements format so stop crying play the game and enjoy it like yeah. take all the fun sadness is for other things yeah sadness yeah, is we for play tier. This as a hobby dude yeah you know we tier was all about sadness we play this as a hobby let's have fun Yes, let's, let's have, have fun. fun, my brothers. And uh, comment down below if you agree with this or not, or wanna you know take a jab at Nash for for saying that. Thank you so much for joining us, listening or watching. Don't forget to check out Fi's channel in the description below, and of course Nash's upload. channel. Yeah, he might upload someday. Uh, it happens once in a while. You know, there's an eclipse. Then then there's a fi upload but it but it's a banger <laughs> but it's a fucking banger every time and of course check out nish's channel don't forget to check all of us out on twitter because as you heard it here twitter is the goo fi yeah i i see you hard oh. agree yeah okay you didn't also, want to say anything ne yeah? nesh year nesh year nesh year uh are you co-streaming ycs raleigh I am gonna go stream YCS Rally, and I hope it does not conflict with the, with the time of my tournament. Do you think that day two is gonna finish before 10 p.m. European time? Day I mean, two Rally is will still be finish. going 10 p.m. European time. So, no, day two will not finish by 10 p.m. European time. Heck, no. That's gonna be like two. Uh, it'll be 5 p.m. over there. You might be in time for like top four in the finals. The tournament oh, is Sunday. Start, I think. Yeah. Oh. Is day two gonna start at that time? Well, you guys are gonna have to figure that out on your own. We'll figure it out. Um, thank you so much for watching. Nash is, got, Nash is not gonna be watching the YCS, but he's gonna be in the tournament. He's gonna he's gonna catch top four eventually. Thank you so much, guys, for watching, for watching, listening. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.